Hello and welcome to episode one of my meme swap into my Tacoma. Yeah, I'm not gonna keep up that, uh, that accent. I'm just making a quick uh, little intro because I realized after editing this entire episode, it's very disjointed. I'm still kind of getting used to all of this. You know, I don't record everything and then I don't explain what happened and it's a little difficult to follow. So I decided to try and make an intro to warn people about that. <laughs> so if you're really looking forward to the actual fabrication, seeing how the beams fits inside the truck, all that kind of stuff, this is not the episode for you. This is well before I got to that point. So this is only really going to be me getting the beams ready, going through all the kind of minutia and everything of uh, replacing all the seals, taking it apart, and everything that kind of happens in between. There's a little bit of information in there if, you know, you're a little uncomfortable with uh, working on this specific engine, there's a little bit of information that I discover and things that I find out. So if you're interested in that, you're more than welcome to kind of skip throughout the video. There's little bits of semi-important information like the thread pitch and bolt size for the timing gear on the crank, um, things like that. So they exist on here, but for the most part, this is just, it's a lot of footage of me taking way too long to, to refresh this engine, to be honest. Um, so if you don't watch it, I don't, I, I definitely don't blame you at all. I rewatched it and it wasn't the absolute most riveting content I've ever seen. It was... There were parts of it where I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, or oh, yeah, that's kind of funny. But I'm not the most entertaining person in the world. I'm not going to be like, hey guys, here's my thing, and then you. And that's not what I am. That's not who I am. Uh, I'm not going to pretend <laughs> and do things that way. I think that's pretty much it, though. It's just warning. If you're looking forward to the actual fabrication and installation of the engine, this isn't that episode. That episode will probably not be the next one, but the following, I believe, maybe two more. Something like that. I still have more to do with the engine. That's it. Without any further ado, here is the aforementioned episode. Okay, so just got back from the hardware store was kind of freaking out because I couldn't find any bolts that were long enough. And then I was like, well, why don't I just get threaded rod and wing nuts? And that that's even better. And uh, yeah, it works great. Um, if anybody's wondering for beams, they are M5 uh, by 0.8. So just normal M5 uh, threading. Uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and remove this now. Here is my attempt. Uh, this is my first time doing a voiceover and this is kind of my first time trying to use the GoPro. Uh, I'm illustrating that I made a mistake here. I should have tried to put the screw in by hand to be able to uh, to remove it. By hand, of course, I mean with a screwdriver. Instead, I used, it was either a drill or an impact. It was a long time ago, I can't remember. But it went into a backing plate there that, I mean, I've taken crank seals out before and I'd never run into this, there being something like this behind it. So I wasn't expecting it, but this just kind of goes to show you can't just assume things. Don't make the mistake like me. Take the seal out the proper way. Don't put it in with a freaking drill. Got it removed. Just used a pick and a flat blade. Eventually was able to pry it off. I'm thinking if I just go ahead and kind of knock that down, like a flap wheel or some abrasive disc, should be fine. It was already a tiny bit warped and that was before I even kind of removed it because it's on this side and I don't see how I could have warped that side. So I'm just going to flatten it back out and honestly I think it should be okay. It's a lot better than it was. Just hit it with a little abrasive wheel on my die grinder. Flatten the other side out a little bit too. Probably just run a file through that. It's a little thin but I think this is really just there to hold the seal as I drop it on the floor. Nice. Oh yeah, see my sweet Target Vans ripoffs. <sighs> Thanks, Tim. Not me. Not talking to third person. Not bad. Yeah. Just took the burrs off. 
didn't want that getting into the oil. It's not terrible. If anybody is doing the front main seal on a beam, just keep in mind there is this very thin metal plate. So if you do the screw trick, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna have to try and fix all this stuff. Oh well. New front main installed. I'm probably gonna save these. Cause I'm a hoarder. I'm gonna use an awkward word here. Supple. Yeah. Yeah. This one's more rubbery for sure. So I don't feel as bad. <laughs> and yeah, just putting a little bit of grease on the inside. Trying to make sure it doesn't pinch or anything. Is it necessary? Mm. Debatable. Debatable. Same thing, just putting a little bit of grease, some multi-purpose grease. The ones for my Jay-Z, as well as 7M, always came with just a little bit of pre-applied grease um, from Toyota, because I buy only Toyota stuff. Some people are like, oh, it's because you're a baller. Nope, I'm broke as hell. And this is why I am broke as hell. You're probably thinking, ah, oh, is he gonna like actually tap those in? Maybe. There we go. Just match that bad mamma jamma. There she goes. Nice. VVTI, man. It's cool, but never... Okay, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's okay? Is my head cut off? Probably. All I'm hearing is double the things to go wrong. engines I hear are pretty darn stout. They can even take a fair amount of boost, which is exciting. I don't plan on putting any boost into this engine. 55! Wow, that's a, a couple of foot pounds there. Yeah, they're both 55. We're gonna set my ultra accurate Amazon special torque wrench to 55 boot pounds. Do a little left handed action today. Nice. Da -da 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 -da. Is that what it is? Not really. I'm just gonna like, get it lined up perfectly. There it is. <laughs> that wasn't hard. Power? Can't afford this a bit, man. I wonder how terrible this is for everyone else hearing Flair in the background. Her voice is angelic. If any of you have any different differing opinions, you can politely keep them to yourselves. Like 23 newton meters. One 6.9 nice foot pounds. 17 foot pounds. Yes. And yes, I am that guy that torques everything. Why? I don't know. Oh man, that was abrupt, wasn't it? That moment you look at the table and you see like a, these random bolts, and you're like, oh god, where did those go? And then you remember that those are for, uh, the flywheel. Yep. Oh yeah, look. Look at all the things. Wow. So many things. There we go. Now, you can see me maybe. Probably not. I'm freaking 
giant lanky guy. I'm really hoping that like there's one person that's watching this and someone is wondering what the hell is going on in the background because they just see this guy like working on a freaking engine and then they hear this very unique sound in the background of a girl screaming playing some sweet video games right it's not very much wow Pork, we're ready, we're ready to rock. Hell, yeah, brother. And yes, I do watch Cletus. I think he's a super cool guy. I think we would all kill to have a race track, wouldn't we? Oh, hey, check this out. This is what sounds like a skateboard bearing. Nice. That's good stuff. Good thing I'm gonna be replacing this. That one's okay. That one's been great, but it's okay. How much coolant is this going to come out of this is my question. I'm going to guess a little bit or a lot. Those are my, those are my two guesses. Also, if anybody was wondering, does he talk to himself when he's by himself? Yeah, I definitely do. What if he had in his exact same conversations? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, man. I don't even know what I did this, like an hour ago. I can't keep track of this stuff. I don't get paid enough for that. I don't get paid. This engine smells funny. Oh, that's the smell of the coolant. It smells terrible. Oh, these are different sizes. That's annoying. Yep, there she goes. Oh, it is. Oh, it's trying to take the whole dang thing. Good thing I loosen these. I'm sure this is an unpopular opinion, but I think, I think diesel sound like shit. Oh no, we're leaking pretty good. Good thing I didn't, you know, just clean this entire engine. So, see, I find that really interesting, right? In Japan. Coolant is green. Why, when it hits the United States, does it change pink? Is it the freedom? Does the freedom make it change color? Or is it the illusion of freedom? That's how we do that. Oh, there it is. Check this though. Look at this. Some ASMR. Oh yeah. Okay. ASMR bad bearing time. Oh man. I do have to take it off. That's annoying. Getting a little obsessive. Uh, What an annoying design. Look at this. This is why I couldn't get that bolt back in. Because it's backed out just enough. Because it's a captive nut. But it's also not. That's kind of annoying, Toyota. Why did you do that to me? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you had a reason. What's done is done. Give you an idea, right? Captive nut. Bearing. Sweet. One thing I did not mention with my 1J, I went overboard. I don't want to do that with this. And when I say overboard, I mean I've painted and cleaned absolutely everything. I'm trying to do this on a budget. Hmm. Autofocus ain't bad, eh? Yeah, let's see. Does, uh, does she have the juice? Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. That was exciting, right? No, not really. It was for me. And more mess. Huh. Right. Oh my goodness, this thing is brand new. I didn't need to replace this. Oh well. Or maybe it said something else. Maybe it said butt sex. I don't know. But in Japanese, of course, because Japan. 
People aren't kidding about. Oh yeah, you know, you, you start recording yourself and, and all that. It's gonna take you so much longer. And I was like, nah, it can't take that much longer. The other part of that most of it's freaking done. But no, I wanted to document it with a video. What a chump. These are the paint pens I use. Just get them at like a local art store. I use them to mark all my bolts because whether you torque things or not, I don't know about you, I have a terrible, terrible memory. So if I see a big giant pink mark, I know that I've tightened it. And not only that, later on down the line, I can see if things are loosening up or whatnot. And here's the cool part. See, we got pink rose and we look up, we've got Aki rose. Yeah. So that's fun. Massive dork. Only takes a couple of minutes, but now your timing marks are, are marked all nicely. I think it looks really cool. You don't like it? Oh well. A little bit of a mess before I get to open that bad boy up. Just gotta clean up real quick. New dipstick. As you can see though, like, fantastic shape, like, this would have been completely fine to run, but I had no idea. So, you know, just got a new one. And yes, penis jokes. Whee! Compared to the new, Ison, see? It just says Ison there. I don't know why it, the other one was all marked off and stuff, but, oops, same here. There's a fresh, fresh water pump. Cool. Well, that's kind of cool. The ice and water pump comes with the gaskets. Yeah. So now, it's got a nice, fresh, wonderful little o ring there. Pop the old one off. New one on. Pop your uncle. Oh, man. Hardest install ever. Would help if it was the right socket. my absolutely excellent videography skills here at work. Yeah, you noticed I just barely tighten those down and then the next thing I'm doing is a timing belt. Yep, nope, that's what I'm seeing as I'm editing as well. Yeah, nice of in timing belt. I like it. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. oh she spins nice. There's a new bearing. That's a pilot bearing. It's one thing I've never understood why like Nissan and stuff seems to use pilot bushings instead of bearings. I mean, I'm sure it's probably cheaper, but 
I don't know, guessing Toyota probably has a reason for using bearings instead. I always thought bearings were better. Brand new OEM flywheel bolts. All eight of them. Pre-loctited and everything. Nice. Ah, slave. Look at that. Brand new tensioner. Bearing. Everything. All ready to go. And then another idler for the time of year. Um, sensors. These would be for cam. Ow! Brand new, because mine got yeeted. Just broke it straight off. Uh, I guess that's the end of showing to, oh wait, what's this? Oh yeah, this right here is the OEM engine hanger. I just thought it'd be kind of cool, the OEM bolt for it as well. If anybody's interested, there's the model number. Who knows if any of this is even in shot for the bolt, if you're interested. Okay, so I went back to put the timing gear on, and if you can see from this video, it does not, for whatever reason, it just doesn't want to like go all the way on, and I don't understand why. I gave it a couple whacks with a hammer, as you can kind of see here. Probably wasn't the smartest thing. And then I started pressing it on and I realized it was going on with not too much force. So I was like, okay, there's something else going on here. Oh, okay. I already unbolted it, but now it goes right on. Yep, learn from my mistakes. I never said I was a professional. I literally said I've never done this before. All right, another day. I mean, definitely the same day. I, I'm not really slow at doing stuff. Got everything all nicely lined up, ready. Yeah, and I definitely did some stuff without pulling out the camera. Still getting used to this whole thing, I guess. See, they're all lined up, all ready to go. Oh, I also drained the oil. Yep, that's pretty much it. Now you're up to speed. Now watch me struggle putting on a timing belt. You kidding me? Uh oh. Dang it. <laughs> uh, it moved. I guess I get to do it again. Oh, I will tell you what is going on in the background. It is fairly certain Tokina Sora song. Oh, actually, maybe. Well, it was Hollow Life related. It was a Hollow Life song, so there's that. Whether it was a cover or original, I don't know. Hey, uh, future Tim here. So at this point, I was reinstalling the spark plugs. I think in my mind, I thought that uh, it'd make it a little bit easier because I was having a really hard time uh, basically making sure it was completely timed properly. It just was a little bit too easy when I was trying to align the belt. It would jump just one tooth because it, in my mind, it was just because it was so easy to rotate, right? Because there's no compression at the moment because there's no spark plugs in it. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm reinstalling those spark plugs. Uh, I'm just kind of reliving this as I'm going through. This was a lot of, this was many months ago. So I, I truly don't remember if this actually ended up helping. Uh, this clip s s still has quite a bit to go. Um, but yeah, apparently, uh, I'm now dancing like an idiot. So, you know, hey, but it's my garage, so I can never do the hell, whatever the hell I want. And apparently I can't speak even in voiceover. But anyway, let's take it right back. So, doodly, 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 doodly.
doesn't seem right. Oh, it's because it's definitely not right. <laughs> All right, well, good talk. So this has more of it. So you can see, all lined up. Obviously not tension on it yet because I haven't pulled that grenade pin, but it all looks good. And if you look here, this is the only part I'm not entirely sure about, but that lines up about as close as I'm gonna get it, I think. So. Yeah, like if I look at it at the right angle, that's that's lined up. So, all right, I think it's time to pull the pin. Let me just double check, but I think so. I need to turn it over a few times, to make sure that it turns over okay, and then it more importantly gets back to the same spot. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm take the plugs out, make it a little bit easier on myself. The times like this where I'm like, I own an electric ratchet. Why am I not using that right now? That's really all I have to say about that. Every once in a while, I don't know. Kind of like using hand tools. It's nice. I'm not in a rush for this. You know, I'm doing this because. Frankly, uh, I enjoy it. So, I'm gonna make it last as long as possible. I'm sure there's a sex joke in there somewhere. Something, something. Doesn't last very long. Something, something. Two minute hero. Should be, yeah, it's all spark plugs. Now let's turn her on over, see how, uh, see how she does. No valve just in hitting in it. More or less right now, huh? Yeah, still in time. So, I think it's time to pull that grenade pin. Let's go ahead and, oh wait, no, I'm gonna put that nut in. God dang it, man. That was possibly one of the easiest timing belts I've ever done. It's also only like the third. 7Ms was terrible, I didn't like doing that. I don't know why. It's just never, just, it was a pain in the ass every time. And then the 1J made me want to kill myself because of the ETI. I kept overthinking everything. Oh, pulley, where does the pulley have to go? Because it turns when the cam don't. And yada yada. Okay, so here is our routing. Yeah, looks good. So take it back over. Yeah. Looks good to me. That down there is still in time. Cool. Pull that in. Alrighty. Here we go. Hmm. Why is the top still loose? Maybe it needs to roll around a bit? Let's move it around here. Ah, yeah, there we go. Very nice. Heck yeah. Go ahead and remove that bolt down here. <gasps> This bad man going on. Ooh, look at that. She's looking like an engine. Yep. Got the surfaces all prepped, cleaned them with brake clean and a rag. Scraped off all the old gasket material. So yeah, it's pretty much ready. Then I went to use my Toyota sealant, found out I left the cap off, and it's completely dried up. 
Well, now I need to go get more. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think I mentioned it in the video, but nah, actually maybe I didn't. Yeah, it looks almost brand new in here. I, there's not even like, the cast aluminum isn't even starting to like change to gold. It looks incredible. And like the cams are all, oh my goodness, the lobes. Mm. Well, that's not a lobe, obviously. But yeah, like it just looks fantastic. Get to uh, replace these. You know, already in here, already on the stuff. Doesn't make sense to not put it in, right? Absolutely riveting content. Ooh, that is nice actually. Those are, those are in really good shape. Almost like the new. Oh, funny how that works. Well, yep, that took no time at all. I decided to just cut open my uh, seal packing. Just use the bottom part that was still okay. Probably wasn't the smartest thing, but I really wanted to get this on. And as you can see, I did it yet again without recording any of it. Yep. But then again, like realistically, all you have to do is put seal packing here. Same thing on the other side. And then the half moons, just the cracks for the half moons. I went a little overboard on it, but yeah. That's all the factory manual says to do. Still kind of deciding what I want to do next, if I want to pull the, well, the lower end upper oil pan um, to replace some of the O-rings in there. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll record it, maybe I won't. Yep, did more without recording. Uh, yeah, so everything looks pretty good here. Uh, I was looking in the oil pan though. Oh yeah, I made a little mess. And uh, I see what looks to be metal. But we're going to find out together through the power of magnets. We're going to find out whether or not this build is going to cost a lot more than I was uh, originally thinking. Oh, look at that. I don't think is magnetic. What? So what is it? Let's investigate. Hmm. Well, it definitely is something metal. Is it aluminum? Not entirely sure what that is. I don't know. But it, I'm just confused. To this day, I still don't exactly know what it is. To, it does not seem to be bearing material. I didn't see anything else inside of the engine that gave me pause or caused me to worry about it. So I've moved forward with it as is, and I don't think there should be any issues, but only time will tell. Well, I got it off. Kind of forgot oil stays in the oil filter even when you drain the oil. Yep, that was a really special moment for me. But even more than that, there's a reason that you're probably supposed to do your timing belt after all of this. Oh man. I need to start cleaning this up now instead of videoing it. But yeah, uh, stupid move. There was still a lot of oil in the engine. It is now escaping onto my brand new timing belt. Yay. All right, cleaned most of it off. Uh, I ended up using soap and water and a paper towel. Pretty much all of the belt is clean now. I'm gonna go over it again. I, when I tip it back over, I might just redo it all. Just take it off, clean it up. But I'm kind of over it for today. I'm not one of those people who's gonna pretend, oh, everything's okay, I'm still having so much fun. Oh, and be this fake person, like, I'm, it bums me out, and this is what happens with cars and engines and stuff. It's reality. I made a mistake, 
and I'm paying for it. I think I'm just gonna clean up for the day, pop both the oil pans back on just temporarily so I can stow the engine and not worry about things falling in it. Um, I did look, by the way. Yeah, actually, I'll show you. Everything looks fantastic in here. Not really super surprised, but yeah, looks great. So I just need to kind of figure out what I want to do next. I mean, realistically, I need to clean up all this gasket material, pop the pan back on. That's it, still have a mess to clean up. Beams. All right, spent a number of hours here today cleaning up the mating surface for the upper oil pan. Uh, these seals will be replaced, but for right now I'm leaving them in there. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty cool, looking pretty good. Uh, same treatment for the upper oil pan. Still need to run cloth with some brake cleaner along it. Um, yeah, yeah. To the other side too. That's all good to go. Uh, this still needs a little bit of work, but that's mostly cleaned up. Whoever did this before in Japan just used all the RTV. Um, so it took a, took a while to get it all out of these like nooks and crannies and stuff like that, but it's pretty much ready. Oh yeah, starting at the exact same angle like always. No, but yeah, uh, went back and uh, just made sure, torqued everything back down, used my torque wrench, just made sure everything was good and paint marked it. So now I know that all of that is done. Uh, gonna flip the engine over now and kind of figure out what I wanna do next. I'm a little stuck, because uh, I don't have the alternator bracket and a couple of other things, because I'm gonna be switching to a Jay-Z alternator because mine got raped by a forklift uh, fork. Got the new rubber grommet for the VSV. Oh, I did find out what this is called. Uh, this is the oil regulator. Yeah. But yeah, that's all regasketed, all good to go. Engine's looking pretty sweet, actually. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I'm trying to actually do this on quite a lot of a budget compared to what I did my 1J on. I'm not trying to replace absolutely everything on this, just what kind of needs to be and what would make it a little bit better kind of going forward because putting this in a vehicle that I'm planning on dailying, I need to make sure that I have <laughs> the wear components and stuff that I have to order from Japan. I need to kind of make sure that uh, I have those already on the engine or at least I have them in my possession. Otherwise, could be down for a while. And if we move over here, you can see, don't know what the hell happened to this poor, poor front timing cover, but man, it just got obliterated by something. Uh, luckily though, I'll get rid of that, I don't need that. Uh, I went on the good old eBay and found a company in Florida that had a fresh set, 25 bucks each, not even bad. And yeah, I know I just said I was trying to keep this on a budget, but I think 50 bucks compared to dealing with like actual issues where rocks could get in and get into my timing belt. I don't know, I, I think that's a, a worthwhile thing. It also just looked so much better. So yeah, I'm gonna get it up on the engine and see how much better it looks. Oh yeah. That looks much, much better. This is kind of fun too. It's also from uh, one of the first gen ones because it says G1, that means it's uh, one of the kind of first set of generations. I think there's two generations, but there's different kind of letters to kind of correspond, but I know that G1, pretty sure that G1 is one of the older ones, uh, which is exactly what this one was. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, now I just need to kind of figure out what I want to do next. I can't really put these on yet because the mounts aren't even <laughs> on yet because I think that's part of the water neck uh, and a couple other things. And over here, I need to make sure, yeah, I'm gonna have to do the dipstick tube as well as I think the alternator bracket. 
but that's kind of a problem because like I said earlier, I plan on going with the excessive one because uh, mine got yeeted by a freaking forklift. Uh, so I'm kind of debating whether I should order that now. Yeah, I probably should actually. So yeah, I'll order that in the exhaust flange so I can build my exhaust for this thing. Uh, yeah. I guess that's kind of it for this update. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. I'm sure you probably didn't. Uh, but if you did, that's cool. I'm glad. <laughs> it, was a, it was a slog for me to edit that. A lot of that has to do with me just not ever... I'm not really that great at editing. Uh, but anyway, thank you for, for watching this video. If you skipped all the way to the end, then uh, I guess I don't blame you. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching this video. This is just the first. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get better at actually recording things and trying to keep track of what I've said, what I haven't, so that it's a little bit easier for people to follow along. Uh, not necessarily that you're gonna try and do this on your own, but just from a story perspective, I, I was, when I was editing and stuff, I was even having trouble kind of remembering like, wait, what the hell? Why did I just do what I just did? But anyway, uh, thanks, thanks so much for, for watching this and uh, look forward to more. I can't promise when they'll come out, uh, all I can tell you is that I am a lot further than this video series currently is. So, stay tuned for more, I guess.